that God giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this podcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall change. in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus mighty name we pray Lord I ask that in the name of Jesus you will touch your people in the name of Jesus Christ every request that they have made in the place of prayers let there be divine supply let there be divine provisions Amen. let help come the way of your people Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. turn your bible with me to the book of isaiah chapter 66 we have just a few minutes to share the word of god this morning and close isaiah chapter 66 from verse 1 Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath my hand made, and all those things had been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor of a contrary spirit and trembleth at my word. Hallelujah. And let's quickly go to the book of, um, let's look at the book of uh, Psalms. Give me that Psalms. Psalm chapter 78, verse 40. Psalm 17 verse 40. Are you there? He says, how oft, that is how often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert. Be fast. Yea, they turned their back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from their, the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan and had turned their rivers into blood and their floors that they could not drink. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. Hallelujah. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. The next verse, he destroyed their vines with ill and their sycamore trees with frosts. He gave up their cattle also to the hill and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. And smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the sheep of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham. But made his own people to go forth like sheep. And guided them in the wilderness like a flock. The next verse. And he led them on safely so that they feared not. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary. Even to his mountain which is right and a right hand at purchased. He cast out the hidden also before them and divided them an inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and provoked the most high God and kept not his testimonies. Let me stop there. Shout hallelujah. Amen. 
This morning, I want you to just see God as the Jehovah, the unlimited one. Jehovah, the unlimited God. Now, the two scriptures that were read, like the last scripture told us the account of how God favored the children of Israel. A lot of miracles, records of miracles of what God did for them in the land of Egypt. If you go back to the place where that verse started, where we started, now you will see, go back to that verse, uh, is it verse 40 now? You see, he said, how often do they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? The next verse, the Bible says that, next verse, verse 41, it says, verse 41 now, yea, they turned their thumb back and tempted God and what? Limited what? the Holy One of Israel. You know what we call a limited liability company? A limited liability company is limited by shares. When you want to register with the corporate affairs, they will ask you, is it a business registration or a limited liability company? Then there is what to call unlimited, you know, liability, you know, company. Now, when we say a limited, you know, liability, they want to say that, okay, what is your, the limit of your share? Is it 50 million? Is it 30 million? Is it 20 million? Now, you see, when people are feeling that, because it is just husband and wife kind of company, praise God, praise the Lord. I remember that year, very year, many years, when we opened that kind of business, um, it was myself and my wife, and of course, our children that are the, we are the chairman, I think I was the chairman, my wife is the, <laughs> praise God, managing director, and the children also, even when they were in their uh, five years or eight years, they are the directors, praise God. We put it there, and of course, we put it there that they are the directors. That is I'm talking about maybe 25 years or 20 something years ago. Now, what was the, the limited share then? Maybe it was just 2 million or 10 million. One, it's just 1 million. <laughs> 1 million is the limited share. Praise God. And you know 1 million 20 something years ago is a big money. Amen. Now, that company today, if you want to use it, we can use it to get business of 20 million. You can't use it to do contract of 100 million. Praise God. Because what you are telling the government when you are registering is that this is our business. Anything that is beyond 1 million, we cannot handle it. But if it is 1 million, that is our capacity. If you go to the bank to borrow money to finance such business, the, business, the company want, I mean, the bank want to look what is your share capital? What is the ability that you profess that you can handle? And so, if it is just 1 million and you are asking for 10 million from the bank, they will not loan you that kind of money. That by the virtue of what you put on paper, you have said that this is our capability. Praise the Lord. Is somebody following me this money? Now, you see, when you are doing that, when we are doing that, well, we thought that it is a big 500,000 was a big money then to us. And I'm sure that that business we have never, I mean, my wife has never used it to do any, to do any contract job. Every other business that he has used afterward was the one that another company that is open with a higher share capital. Somebody listen to me. Now, that is just it. Now, there is a way. When you are doing that registration, you have said, oh, my capability is 5 million. My capability is 10 million. That I am limited. That's why it's called limited company. So, so, and so limited. Praise God. It is not just the limited that is the name, but what you have put in the document that this is, how, I mean, our capacity, our limitation. Somebody hearing me? Praise God. I say praise the Lord. But there are some companies that are unlimited. Praise God. They are unlimited. If you look at companies, you know, like some of these, uh, 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 I mean, all this Unilever, Unilever, for example, go and Google Unilever. You say Unilever Unlimited. 
Jacob, they are saying that mention the billions of dollars kind of project we can do what? We can handle it. That our strength has no limitation. Amen. Now, if you are now, when you are talking about businesses, you know, in terms of dollars, millions or billions of dollars, those are the people that can kill for that business. If you have a limitation of 100 million, you don't need to come there. Hallelujah. Because you are limited, they are unlimited. Now, this scripture that we read, he said, the Israelite, despite all that he has done, they have seen God at work and yet they limited the Holy One of Israel. <laughs> Praise God. They limited God. They limited God. That's all that they have seen. Yet, in their mind, they limited God. I want you to understand that, look, before your mouth speaks, God deals with your heart. When you are praying, now, if that prayer is going to be answered, it is not only what you spread from your mouth that God hears. He hears what is resonating. I mean, is it not? Resonating, yeah. What is resonating, you know, from your heart. God is looking at what is going in your heart. Does your heart agree with your, pra with your prayers? Does your heart agree with what is coming out from your mouth? Israelite, the Bible said, they limited and it provoked. God said he was provoked. It was provoked that they limited me. Me, God. <laughs> and what did they say? Despite the that God dealt with their enemies, he brought them with mighty hand. And uh, he made them to cross through the Red Sea. The same Red Sea they crossed was the, the same Red Sea that drowned. According to that scripture, that drowned their enemies. And after they have come out, after they came out, of course, of the, of the sea, they were going... But because there was no water for a period of time, the Bible says they limited the Holy One of Israel. And even when God even gave them water, after some times, they wanted food. Praise God. They wanted me. They said, look at that prayer. Look at, look at this. They remember not his hand. Not the day when he delivered them from their enemy. Hallelujah. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse very quickly. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Now, when you look at it, it can be fast. Let me, I want to pick something out there. Next to the next verse. Praise God. Now, you see that they were asking that can God furnish table for them in the wilderness? They were querying, can God give us meat? Can God give us this in the wilderness? What of all that God has done? Hallelujah. They are forgotten about that. They are saying in the heart, God, can God do this one? Ah, this and that. We remember cucumber. We remember garlic. We remember onion that we used to eat in Egypt. Hey, this and that. Ah, Moses, it is better should have left us, you know, in the land of Egypt than to come to this wilderness and die. Uh, now we are growing hungry. There is no food to eat. They said in their heart, can God, can God furnish table for us? Can God, is there something going in your heart and a situation you are passing through and you are querying God that can God do this? Can God solve this problem? Can God sort me out? Can God heal me? Can God deliver me? What is that situation that is questioning the ability of God? What is that thing going on in your heart that is putting God in a box? That you are limiting God in your heart. You are limiting God in your mind. But I want to tell you this morning, our God is the Jehovah, the unlimited God. Shout hallelujah. Is the unlimited God. And when we read from that Isaiah chapter 66, God was saying that he's looking at the heart of men. He's looking at the heart of men. And God now said that, he said, this is the kind of man. This, he said, God said, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the earth that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my right? God said, look, if I ask you to do anything, what do you, how do you want to build for me? Heaven is my throne. When I sat, sit, sit in heaven, I made the heart what? My footstool. And God was now saying that, what is the house? What do you think you are building? God now said, for all those things are at my
my my at my handmaid and all those things have been said the law but to this man will i look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit i'm trembling at my word hallelujah god said i am searching out the heart of men i am looking at the heart of men there is a man that i'm looking at a man whose heart is perfect towards me a man who is in agreement with my word a man who is in agreement with my promises god said i am in search of such man not people that limited god not people that does not believe the promises of god not people that their heart is not in line or in agreement with the scriptures hallelujah in the days when jesus was on the earth anybody that comes to jesus jesus will ask question do you think i can do it when the lepers came and said ah, dear, now if you will make us clean i said do you think i can he say yes you can they say okay without clean without clean the blind people came he will ask them what do you want me to do Bain Blatmios came and said thou son of david had mercy upon me and when he came he brought him to jesus and jesus christ said what do you want me to do for you and there are cases that jesus after the, that said when they asked and jesus said we said your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole the woman who was having problem with the issue of blood left a house i've told you here sometimes that when somebody is having the issue of even the normal menstrual the minimum five days or whatever you know, that woman have to pass through their menstrual circle during that five days anything they touch is unclean okay if they touch the garment of their husband the woman the man is unclean if they touch the cup and their husband touch that cup you know it's unclean that is the whole testament you know uh, uh, instructions and laws now you cannot imagine a woman that is having you know passing blood every day for 12 years for 12 years praise god that woman will be stinking praise god stench that will be coming out of from her the bible says she has spent all that she had she has visited physicians she has visited either traditional or orthodox medicine she has spent all that she had and that sickness has brought penury lackness into her life but one day she heard about jesus and she made up her mind and when you are having that kind of you know issue of blood this and that you must not come in the midst of crowd because whosoever you touch that person is unclean but in the land of israel if they need to go out they have to announce themselves they have to begin to shout an unclean person is coming an unclean person is coming and everybody begin to run for such a person an unclean person is coming oh an unclean person is coming oh all those 12 years going from one doctor or one you know physician or the other anytime she's opportune to leave to go she has to announce herself an unclean person is coming what a shame what a ridicule what a great you know what a great sorrow that this one has passed through for 12 years but you see do you, do you know that something that marvels me about the story of that woman was that for that 12 years she did not die praise the lord may i tell you any situation that you are passing through now cannot kill you if devil cannot kill you when you are not a christian it's too late for him to kill you when you did not know your left from your right satan cannot terminate your life the grace of god preserved you i tell you it is too late for the devil you know to kill you whatever you are passing through it is just for a while you are just passing through a phase hallelujah everything that is going on in your life shall surely come to pass it has come it has a time lag to live your life because your god is jehovah unlimited your god has solution you know he has thousands of ways when you don't have a single one so this woman the devil could not kill terminate blood you know stream of blood in from her life every day every day we have doctors and nurses you know who will be able to explain to us hallelujah 
Maybe in those days there is no technology of even if you refill. I want to call it now. If you, you do you do blood transfusion for the woman, it's as, as as useless as anything because the blood is not going to stay. So she must be pale. But at the same time, for that 12 years she was going all about, the devil could not kill her. Because there is a Jehovah who is interested in her case. Hallelujah. There is a Jehovah. Jesus Christ has not started his ministry when this woman has been having this problem. And there is every possibility that the age of this woman was more than that of Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. So, well, you know, if you subtract 12 years from 33 years of Jesus, you know what it remains. Maybe another 12 years. Am I right? Another 12 or 22 years. Praise God. Now, the woman has been suffering. The Bible says he has spent. What of the woman, the man by the pool of Bethsaida, 38 years? He has been in that problem before Jesus was born. <laughs> Praise God. So Jesus, that's why when he was telling the story to Jesus, an angel used to come and throw him, you know, stare at the water, whosoever comes, and he did not know that the one who is sending the angel is the one talking to him. I can tell you, our God is Jehovah Unlimited. He's going to visit you. He's going to touch you. He's going to turn your story around in the name of Jesus Christ. He is Jehovah. The unlimited God. He understands the stories of your life. At times when you are, when you want to even express yourself, you don't even know what to say. If you want to tell people what you are passing through, it becomes difficult to explain yourself, to express yourself. Because there are things that you cannot express in words. But that heart, that bleeding heart, that sorrowful heart, that challenging heart, Jesus sees you in that situation. He understands what you are passing through. The Bible says concerning that man, he said Jesus knew that he has been there a very long time. Before Jesus left heaven, the man has been in that situation. And the man has not been able to be lucky enough to enter into the water, the pool of Siloam, I mean, is that pool, is the prophet Cedar River, whenever that pool was there. Jesus knew all his struggles. He knew all his attempts to enter into the pool. But somebody will have entered. Case closed. Till another time. Hallelujah. No wonder that song says Jesus knows all about our troubles. He knows. He said before you ask, I know what you need. He just wants us to ask. He understands it. He knows. The Bible says we don't have an high priest who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Himself also has passed through this road. He has been tempted in all ways. In other words, he has suffered. Jesus knew what it means to be hungry. Hello? The Bible says he was hungry. Jesus knew what, what it means to be thirsty. Even at the last point on the cross of Calvary, he said, I was test. I'm testing. Jesus knew what to, to undergo pain. He had pain. To the extent he said, my father, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? That was, you know, the peak of that pain. I don't know whether you are in the peak of pain. Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. He has passed through that. He understand what you are passing through. He understand your pain. He understand your difficulties. He understand your challenges. Some things you cannot explain, he understands. He understood that this man has been there for a very long time. All the attempt to be healed, and he was not healed. Jesus knew all the attempt he has made. But now, when Jesus was coming, God, the mercy of God located this man. I pray for you. May the mercy of God locate your life. The mercy of God located him. Jesus went straight to him. The woman, that, 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 the other woman I'm talking about, with the, with the, with the with you, if your blood, that was the case. This woman came, but she has a determination. And God saw her heart. Before she left over and said, hmm, that Jesus that is passing through this place, I'm going to encounter that Jesus today. That is faith in action. He said, she has determined. If I can but touch the hem of his garment. I know that I will be made whole. 
if I can touch the hem of his garment. Is there somebody here who is believing God for something and just say that if I can just call the name of Jesus. If I can just trust Jesus Christ. If I can just believe him. If I can call his name. If I can mention my, my body to him. I know that there will be solution. The woman made up her mind and she came and of course touched the garment of Jesus. She did not even, she was not looking part of people that can even talk to Jesus. She touched the end of the garment of Jesus. The Bible states the flow of the blood stopped. Something happened in our body. And I'm telling you something is about to happen in your destiny. Something is going to happen in your life. Our Lord God Almighty is Jehovah Unlimited. There is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing that can stop him. There is nothing he cannot interfere in. There is no problem he cannot solve. And so, the woman, the Bible said the flow of blood for 12 years stopped. And Jesus knew that virtue has come out. Hey, so many people, they said, who touched me? Hallelujah. Who touched me? Ah, and Peter, you know that question, look, somehow, and Peter said, Basta. With this, people, is it who touched me? Or how many people touched me? Jesus said, Who touched me? But Peter felt that is the wrong question. How many people have touched me? How many people have put to touch Jesus with their body? How many people have touched his garment? Some people they may just admire that garment. Ah, tailor today I don't share that now. The tailor that sold this uh, this garment of Jesus. Ah, you don't know some people when they go to church or they go to one party, eh? When they are snapping, it is not because they are listening to someone. They are listening. They saw a fashion, a design of a dress. You know now, especially our women. Shout hallelujah. Our women also we used to do it at times. We must confess. Praise God. When you say design, say ah, this one is good. This one is good. You snap. And they think you are recording message. They don't know that it is. Uh, yes, you want that design for yourself. Shout hallelujah. Now, see, somebody might go somewhere and uh, you admire something. Some people might be admiring Jesus. It could be the eloquence of Jesus. It could be the boldness of Jesus. It could see, be the accuracy of the prophecy of Jesus. It could see, be, you know, even the Pharisee, they admire Jesus. They say, wow, look at him the way he, he talked like a man who has what? Authority. Even his persecutor admired him. Praise God. <clears throat> so, but admiring Jesus is not as good as having faith in Jesus to solve your problems. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, somebody touched me because I perceive virtue anointing has been released to solve that problem. There is anointing of the almighty God that is in the house to solve your problem. To give you solution. The woman came trembling. And narrated the stories of her life. And Jesus Christ said. Daughter. Be of good share. Your faith. Has made you whole. Be of good share. Daughter. Be of good share. I can tell you that what happened in the life of that woman that day was a wholeness Jesus called her daughter which means with the faith as she reached unto Jesus she reached unto Jesus with her whole life surrendering to Jesus to render to the faith that Jesus Christ represented praise the Lord so this morning I want to close and tell you that God is looking at the heart of men those who trembles at the world, which means if you said that this man I'm looking, that.